Bell, Bell. Again, it's May 19th, 2020, week eight of the COVID-19 quarantine. This is Bill Bilkey. Uh, shout out to my daughter, Claudia, the camera person, and John Bilkey, my assistant. So we just got the BenQ WDC20S InstaShow. Just open up the box. The plastic's still on it. Uh, so we'll go over what's in it. So you've got a couple pucks here. Uh, right now you've got an HDMI, which is the signal will go over HDMI. We'll do up to 60 seconds per frame. USB is simply for power. That'll go into the computer, and I'll show you that in a second. These can be stored in this. This, this is the display holder, first time using it. So it just goes right in like that. Um, so then what I did is I opened it up. So you've got a little USB extender here. There were four different nationalities for power supplies. I'm guessing this is the US. So I'm gonna take it over here. Here is the power supply that comes with, the, with it. The WDC 10 and 10S, you can also be, uh, you wouldn't need the extra plugs. But since this is uh, twice as powerful, you need the plug. So I, I'm just going to slide this right on it, plug it in, and did I get power? I am getting power. Okay, so step two is no pressure at all as we open up the HDMI cable. We want to connect that. And again, I'm, I'm using the BenQ EW800ST, but it could work with our panel. This can work with any device, Chromebook, uh, Windows, Mac, a document camera, a Blu-ray player, whatever you want to connect. Okay. So I've got that connected. Let me go device here, and I'm just gonna go to the HDMI source. Okay, so now the Insta Show comes up. And again, I didn't do a lot of time here to set up the projector, so we're not really concerned about how great the projector looks. Um, so there's a couple ways to connect from a notebook. Again, Windows, Mac, Chromebook or mobile. So I'm going to start out with my laptop. Unless you want to go first, John, so you should probably get to be better at this than me. Okay, so I'll just take this, uh, the puck here. And I went and bought this for $17 from monoprice.com. And I want to test this out to make sure this works. Uh, because if you have a USB-C laptop, as I do. Let's see if this adapter works. So now I could also do another USB-C there, 4K here, and that. So let's put this right into the USB-C. And now the, the button turned blue. Wait, wait for the solid green. And that'll mean it's paired. And I guess it was blinking green, but now I'm connected to my laptop. P, P. So I'm going to duplicate it instead of extend. All right, so now I can extend what was on there. Good. I'm just gonna go second screen only. All right, so there's mine. Uh, now, so we've got my screen on. Now there's a button on this puck over here that lets you convert to split screen. So I click that button. And split screen mode is on now. I push the button again. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go to the 
Wi-Fi and we'll find WDC 20, which is there. Oh, I did not put in the password. It's and WDC 20, same it, thing as the... Is it? Yeah, whatever is next to the lock is the password. Okay, so now I just click uh, mirror my device, so I should be able to just swipe here, start mirroring to the WDC 20. If I go sideways, it should go sideways. So let me go back and hit the button again, and now we're in split screen. Okay. So we, now we've got two devices going. Capturing my screen, so I'll do that. And now we have three devices on the one screen at the same time. All right. And then the Chromebook. Let's do. Let me do that one for you. All right. So the Chromebook. What we... oh, John's showing off. He's writing up there. Okay. For the Chromebook, let's just do this. What kind of connection do you have? Oh, it's USB C. Okay. So we would need the same connector. Let's just show that it works with HDMI. I'm just going to unplug mine. And we're going to plug this in. And just push that green button. Put it into, into split mode. The WBC is connected and now we're in split mode. So now we've got the Chromebook going, we've got the uh, mine go or that one going. And we've got my iPhone going now. WDC20S. Oh, of course, since we're on our own network, nothing happens there. All right. So that was the BenQ WDC20S Insta Show. Uh, we've connected a Chromebook, a Windows PC, an iPhone, an Android phone, and didn't even have to read the instructions. All right, so we love, I just wanted to show that we can show a video, 60 frames per second. Uh, we can do 4K, but I don't believe this one's 4K. But uh, hit the button again, shows up there. Hit the video. So I'm going 60 frames a second. Actually, I think this video may skip on its own, but it should get better as we go into it. And, and again, I could go from a Blu-ray player wirelessly, a document camera wirelessly. So I just wanted to show that you can also do videos because I didn't show videos before. Step by step, we create. Uh, from there, uh, Tom, uh, Bob Woodick is going to go over how the competition compares to us as far as the show WDC20. Thank you. I want to use a wireless presentation. You can't put the barco up on top of the projector and ceiling mount it. It can only be on a table. It can only be on a wall. Do better video, and of course, we do more devices. So. It's not a perfect product. We have some things that we're working on for our next generation, but right now for 1500 bucks, it is a very 
very attractive product. And I'm telling you, when people start getting back into meeting rooms and they want to stay six feet apart, and you only have one cable and everybody's got to move around to use the cable, InstaShow S is the easiest $1,500 spend any meeting room manager is going to want to have because now he can just get two or three buttons or social distance uh, using Miracast or AirPlay without having to go through a, a whole bunch of network reconfiguration. How does Mersive work? Ours, you plug into a button. It takes seven to 10 seconds for it to encrypt the data with the receiver once it's got power and then you, it turns green, you start presenting. Pretty simple. If you do immersive, you gotta log on to the presentation network. Oh wait, that's a security risk because there are crawlers that if you can get onto one network, you can hop through VLANs through other ones if you have got a, a more advanced uh, hacker. If you don't believe me, just ask the CIA at that uh, lady in Mar-a-Lago that went into Trump's thing when they plugged in a USB into a CIA computer and they barely could contain it. It almost got under the CIA network. You gotta install an app on your notebook if you don't have one already. Then you gotta pick the screen. You gotta figure out what the nomenclature is for the screen. And by if it's sensitive information, you certainly don't wanna pick the wrong screen. Type in the pin number and then you can start presenting. Bottom line is very simple on the left more complicated on the right. So, bottom line, you have a product category that's growing at 40% year over year. You have a product category that enables social distancing very easily and effectively. You have a product category that you don't need to be an expert at, and you can collaborate at 4K, touchback, four simultaneous presenters. It's simple, no network configuration, and oh, by the way, all the cloud stuff that everybody else has, yeah, we give that to you for free. So you can have centralized management over all of these things without a subscription. Questions? Hey, Bob, can you just do a quick few quick bullet points versus the Kramer? Yes. Okay, so the Kramer VIA is similar to the Mersive system, except a little bit less uh, robust. Uh, the Kramer does 1080p like the Air Tank. The Kramer, you can do encryption, but the Kramer, Remember I was talking about bandwidth? The Kramer, if you're running video, 25 megabits per user. If you happen to have a four, uh, you could divide it up into four ways, just like the Insta Show. But if you're running a classroom, a bank of uh, a classrooms on the, the network switch, four-way switch with video, you're, locked, you're talking 100 megabits per second on that network switch. Bottom line is it can work, but all you're doing is you're moving all the burden onto the school network infrastructure, which you guys may or may not sell, versus InstaShow, which is a standalone system that relieves the burden on the school infrastructure. Kramer also requires an app for the most part uh, in, in order to do that. And, you know, it's basically a more expensive version between the AirTame and a less expensive version than the Mersive and uh, sort of a tweener between the two. And all three of these systems, you are dependent on the network performance of your customers. So if it doesn't work, it's not my fault, it's the network's fault. And all of them, basically, you can't do more than 30 frames per second. So if you're looking to step up and differentiate those are all standard solutions that have been popular for the last couple of years because that's all they had in education. This is why I call it a miss because we didn't anticipate educators wanting to do this. And now we're, you know, uh, this Tuesday, we just found out we had a big school district in, uh, in the Inland Empire uh, starting to standardize an Insta show for classrooms. Totally shocked. I mean, we gave them a good price. But uh, we designed it for corporate and schools love it. So I think this needs to be part of your uh, kit because people love them better. And if you, if you give it a fair chance, you'd be shocked at how people react. Uh, Bob, so we had one question. Uh, what's the range and distance? On, on the ah, excellent question. So 10 meters on the InstaShow 10, 15 meters or yards, 45 feet on the um, on the 20. The reason we could go farther, but we actually detuned it a little bit so that we prioritize higher bandwidth for 60 frames a second. The other thing is that uh, in our meeting rooms in uh, Taiwan headquarters, they're all right next to each other, right? So 
It turns out that uh, there's some advanced frequency hopping in the InstaShow. So it's sort of like your Bluetooth headset, you know, when you're sitting at the traffic light, your headset and phone are finding an open Bluetooth frequency and hopping from one frequency to the other while you're on the call. So you don't get blocked by the guy next to you. We have the same technology in the chips here. And at, at 30 to 45 feet, we are only competing with two or three other devices, which really isn't a problem uh, to be able to deploy a whole meeting room bank of uh, meeting rooms, 10, 15, 20 meeting rooms uh, in one of those halls like we have in uh, our headquarters in Taiwan. So that was something that we, we did because that's what we wanted. And we found out that now that works great in a classroom so that you don't have a, you can deploy it on a classroom on a very large scale without having to scratch your head and going, wait a second, these things are all bumping into each other. Yeah, and then just to add, this is Chris Martin, just to add to what Bob had to say, we can, we have some advanced tuning as well. So if you have some devices that are even closer than what Bob was talking about, we can actually peg those devices to a specific uh, Wi-Fi channel to ensure that they stay uh, out of each other's way. But it's pretty rare that we have to do that. Yeah, sometimes at trade shows, there might be some interference, you know, at the booth next to you, right? Yeah, that's where we've had the biggest trouble. and. Uh, we actually ended up getting it to work, which is practically impossible because it wasn't designed for that. So there's a lot of frequency hopping that goes in there. And these chips get have gotten a lot better, especially with the InstaShow S. Okay, great. Well, if there's no more questions, we'll go on to Tom. Uh, good